What's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. And if you are listening to this on the podcast platforms, please do subscribe. And if you are listening to this on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. It's free, unlike Direct TV. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that like button. It's like walking into the room and hitting that light switch. Let's just go ahead and brighten up the place and let's get into this conversation slash reality chat. I debated whether I was going to talk about this, but I'm just going to do a brief conversation about Giselle. Uh, the Real Housewives of Potomac. If you guys has, have been watching this past season and even the previous seasons from before, Giselle is just the definition of misery. She is a miserable you-know-what. Okay, I, I just was so disgusted with her. I just do not care for this woman's characteristics at all. I don't know her, obviously, But look, she's on a reality show where she's displaying herself to the public. She's not displaying her real life. And nobody really knows what's going on in her personal life. And look, it's not that we really care to know what's going on in her personal life, but the fact that you are on a reality show and that's what you're paid to do, she does not do that at all. And the things that she has showcased has made people grow to dislike her even more. Because if you think back to some previous seasons, she was dating this guy and he was, she she appeared to really like him. His name was Sherman, I think. And just all of a sudden, he just blew her off. We don't know the reasons. She didn't share the reasons. She had a vulnerable moment when she was sharing it with her friend slash hairstylist which is questionable because her hair just is atrocious so many times more often than not she was sharing a like a vulnerable moment she was getting her hair shampooed she was laying back in the shampoo bowl and I don't remember exactly what it was it was supposed to be some event or something that they were going to go to with you know the other cast members and she just didn't hear from him anymore and she was just not sure why of At least that's what she was sharing on camera. And she cried a little bit. And at that time, again, that was several seasons ago. I felt a little bit sorry for her because I'm like, dang, you know, to be on, be on national TV like that and to just get blown off. I'm quite sure that's not a good feeling, but she really missed an opportunity to get people to like her somewhat and look being on these reality shows not everyone is going to like everyone I get that some people are going to be more likable than others some people you know they could care less if people like them they just are there to do their job and that's what this is right now but it's it's almost like once that moment happened she just shut down and she didn't want to share much of anything when it comes to her life she had a failed business launch she had her makeup line it was called every hue and that was i thought a good thing for her i thought she was doing it well and for whatever reason it it just shuttered she didn't give any explanation to on anyone on the show as to why she never went into the reasons as to why she didn't have that business anymore it just was here today and gone tomorrow like nothing (laughs) explaining anything about it and and what's kind of funny is the fact that Karen she started doing her things with the fragrance the La Dame fragrance that was like her first product before she was doing the the wigs the hair and and now the home essentials like the candles and stuff Giselle did hers before Karen did. And Giselle was mocking Karen for it. And now Karen is winning in that area. And she's mocking Karen as much as she possibly can, trying to make Karen out to be a hoe. And she's sleeping around and she's got boyfriends. And and like some of the things that were just being said was just pretty, pretty gross. Look, I don't know if the things are true or not. And I'll be honest, I, the way Karen kind of blows things off a little bit or she just doesn't say look that is just not true like you guys are really reaching like just be straightforward with it 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 makes you some people may question a little bit especially after this 
this last episode, the grand finale, when Mia confronted Karen about it. And we know Mia is not the most honest person, but Mia was, she pulled her to the side and she asked her about some things, but this isn't about Karen. This is just to say, Giselle has done some, some devious things in the name of misery. When she made the t-shirt up and she was calling, you know, calling Karen and Ray out on their tax situation and just other things that was going on. They tried to expose Karen with her home and saying, you know, does she really live in Potomac and all this other stuff? It was just like stupid, petty little girl stuff. You don't, you don't think of a woman of a certain age, their age would be doing things like that and, and having low blows. But the reason being is because Giselle is just the definition of misery. And she's a beautiful, miserable, you know what? Because she's got the outer beauty for the most part. She's an older woman, you know, people call her some names. They talk about her cankles and her neck and, you know, some different things like that. I, you know, I think Giselle is pretty. I don't, I don't doubt that she is a beautiful woman, but her insides and her actions just make her look so ugly. And so when she was calling Karen out on different things over the past several seasons, it was definitely out of a space of misery and jealousy. Karen, whether people believe she's stepping out on her marriage or she and Ray have an agreement, really that's nobody's business to be honest with you because for the most part, I believe Karen is as upfront as she wants to be on this show with showcasing her life. It's definitely more than Robin and Giselle can say. So on this last episode, on the grand finale, it was Candace's video, video party video reveal for her song Insecure. And at the end, this is the reason why I wanted to do this conversation. At the end of the episode, the confessional with Giselle, and I guess whoever was doing the confessional asked Giselle, like, what does she think of the song? Because you never hear in the confessionals really when they ask them whatever question they're asking them. So we just really see them speaking about things. But we know for the most part, it's a question or questions that are being asked and they're speaking on it and they're elaborating a bit. But she was just hating on Candace completely. She was like, what, what I think of Candace's song? What, I, don't, I don't even remember the song. You know, at that moment, I was just like, this woman is just the definition of misery. That's when I said that. That's when I said that. I've thought it before, but that's when I actually just said it out loud. I said, this woman is the definition of misery. You are so jealous. Candace has cotton on this show and she has risen as much as some people don't like her and they call her out for her comments and her tweets. Candace has definitely risen to the occasion. Nobody can take that away from her. She came on this show and she took it by storm. She has become a music artist, something she said she's always dreamed about. She has been doing acting roles. She is making the most out of this situation. She is married to a man that she loves. And people may say, oh, she's going to drive Chris away. But we're, we're seeing their real life. We're seeing them have the arguments. We're seeing them have the loving moments. We're, we're seeing Chris support her. We're seeing her express her love towards him. That's more than we can say for definitely for Giselle and Robin. So the fact that Giselle sat there and was hating on Candace, what the song? I don't even remember the song. But then you're being fake in her face saying, thank you so much for inviting me. This is, this is great. You're just so fake. Why did you even come if you don't like her? And then at the, the video launch party, she had the nerve to say, well, you know, can I talk to Chris now? All season, you want to, you, you want to, on the first or maybe first or second, I can't remember if it was the first episode or second episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac, she brought up this uncomfortable moment with Chris. Or it, And then on the last episode, you want to bring up the fact that, well, you know, Chris said he, you know, would be okay with talking to me. You know, could I talk to him now? Really? After all that time, after all of those months, because the show wasn't filmed in two weeks, 
And then you're going to try to do that at her video launch party. Like that's a place where she's doing something big and she's celebrating. And you think that he wants to be talking about this lie there. Like you have got to be kidding me right, right now. And so, yeah, she is definitely the definition of misery when it comes to her being on this show. I just don't know what her place is. I don't even know why they gave her the title of executive producer. Executing, executing what? Like what, what is she doing? She does not need to even be on the show anymore. I'm just so over Giselle. She is this person that just comes to stir confusion and drama. She does not reveal anything about her real life. And hey, her real life may just be exceptionally boring, like mine. Like all I do is work. <laughs> like seriously, like th there's there's nothing to really see there. So I would never think about being on a reality show. But I'm just saying, if you're gonna be on the show and be making the type of money that you're making, and all you're doing is stirring up drama and hating on people. Like, why are you here? Why are you here? I'm over Giselle being on this show. She is the definition of misery. She was just there to hate on Candace. And then to, I, I can't wait to see the reunion. I really can't wait to see Candace's reaction to Giselle. I can kind of predict it, but I'll wait to watch it and see what is actually said because I I don't know why Candace would think that Giselle was her friend. I mean, I remember the first season that Candace came on the show. Giselle was hating on Candace from the word go as soon as they were rolling. She was like, who is this girl? Where'd you come from? And Candace's response, I'll never forget it. I come from Jesus. I was like, yes, girl, say that. <laughs> So I liked her then. I, you know, I just, I liked her then. I've never been a pageant girl, never been into the pageant world. And I know that's where she comes from, but it, you know, I just like Candace's personality. And in my opinion, I just love how she just like immediately snapped back at Giselle. And that's what I liked about Monique when I did care for Monique, when she used to be on the show, when Giselle came at her and was like, you don't have a home. And she's like, I have four homes. <laughs> and at that moment, I was like, yes, let her have it. Again, misery, miserable, jealous. I am just over this woman being on this show. And so this is what misery looks like, people. Let me know your thoughts about everything that I talked about. Let me know if you think Giselle should be coming back to the Real Housewives of Potomac. And guys, thank you so much for listening to this content. I really appreciate it. And subscribing to the channel if you have not already done so. So guys, until the next time, this is Beth and I'm just being beautifully honest. <laughs>